investigators, loss adjusters, corporate investigators, government investigators, private investigators, and security risk analysts and workplace health and safety professionals. I'm Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy with this week's update episode 75 of what's been happening in Australian investigations around the country. It's been an enormous week. I'm here by myself this week. So if you put a comment up, um, it'll throw me right off and I'll probably stuff up the whole program. So comment away. <laughs> if you're looking for work as a government investigator, corporate investigator, um, private investigator, you cannot go past this Facebook page. Um, so just join that Facebook page and you'll see available contemporary jobs um, that have been put up this week. So here's some examples. These are um, some government and corporate ones to start with. So a child protection investigator for the Association of Independent Schools in New South Wales. What a great job that one's going to be. So it's not government, that's a corporate investigation job. Down in Tasmania, there are 16 positions going in Launceston, Hobart and in Devonport for biosecurity inspectors. So these are the people charged with keeping Queensland fruit fly out of Tasmania and away from their valuable cherry crops down there. So you'll be going to the airport with your little beagle sniffer dog and you'll be checking people's luggage for fruit. So that's a great opportunity. It's not exactly a full-time job seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's during the busy period when the aircraft are landing and the boats docking. So really great job if you're down there in Tassie. Um, this is beauty. This is a corporate one down in um, uh, Victoria. It's a gas investigator. I've given evidence in the gas tribunals. So a great little opportunity for a person who's a, a plumber or a registered gas fitter. Um, down there with work, uh, Energy Safe in Victoria. Um, this is a uh, aged care facility, complaints and investigation specialist. So this investigator in New South Wales will be uh, investigating complaints by um, people who have elderly um, relatives in uh, care, that sort of thing. And here's a beauty here for the operations coordinator for fisheries in Western Australia. Whenever they advertise this, it goes berserk here at the Australian Security Academy with people that want to get the diploma of government investigation to meet the um, requirements of that role. So fisheries is always a high demand one. But equally, this is a beauty that came out this week for Australian Border Force Protection. So if you're interested in protecting Australia's borders, uh, just get on Seek and see that one or just um, Google ABF Australia and you'll see all about starting a career there with them. One of the great jobs you can have as an investigator in, um, in government is with racing integrity. And down in Victoria, they've got um, a stipendary steward uh, investigator opportunity down there. So they're just some of the jobs. I'm going to come back with the private investigator ones later, but just some of the jobs that you can see this week if you go and join up with our Facebook page. Now, 1,800 people um, have subscribed to that. It's free, and you can see what jobs are going out there in relation to what's happening in private government and corporate investigations. One of the ones I saw today, which was a beauty, I thought, was this one with Amazon. And Amazon are looking for a warehouse security person. Anything to do with warehouses or transport by trucks, it's a major security risk. And this one is with Amazon. And you might think to yourself, well, hang on, that's a big worldwide company. What hope in hell have I got of getting that job? They want, you know, someone with a degree in this or whatever. They're pretty high standard there. But I just want you to watch this and have a little look at how successful you can be um, if you just have a go. Hi, I'm Mike Evans with just a little bit of an update on what's been happening at the Australian Security Academy. I was contacted from Melbourne yesterday by a client of ours who puts quite a few people through our training program in Certificate 3 in Investigative Services. And he said to me, Mike, did you put such and such through your program? And I said, yeah, we did. Uh, she went through it about eight years ago. She was working for you then. He said, yes. She left me and then went and worked for Goldman Sachs. And I said, oh, right, that's pretty good. He said, yeah, we were very pleased to see it because she was a very capable investigator. Um, she left Goldman Sachs after a couple of years. She became the fraud investigation manager for the Commonwealth Bank. 
I said, well, that's no big deal in the times today when all the banks are hiring fraud investigators as a result of the banking inquiry. He said, no, that was way before that and it wasn't even trendy then. He said, two years into that, where she was doing that, she was poached by Amazon. She's now in America and she's working for Amazon as their fraud investigator internationally. So people say to me, look, I struggle to get work as a private investigator. I say back to them, if you study your art, if you are passionate about what you do, you never know where it may lead. And I hear stories like that on a monthly basis. I'm Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy. So that's what happened um, is a, as a result of an Amazon application from an Australian Security Academy investigator graduate in Melbourne um, just a few years ago. So look, it's real. You can get jobs with these companies if you're qualified, if you're determined, and particularly <laughs> if you're enthusiastic and passionate about your work. That's what they want to look at. Now, in big news this week, we've had a law firm sat on their backside by a magistrate in this matter. It's Perpetual Trustees Victoria Limited versus Hogan. Now, what happened back in 2013, they wanted to kick Hogan out of... Um, the property that he or she was in and um, it's dragged on for eight years and they couldn't get the person out. Um, they were behind in their payments or something or other or something fell through. I don't know. I don't know the full details. I haven't got time to read it. But this is the court um, case matter that happened. It's in Queensland. So you can Google Perpetual Trustees Victoria Limited versus Hogan. It's really important to you as an investigator, whether it's government, corporate or private investigations that you're doing because in this ruling here, the magistrate refused to accept a statutory declaration from a person that worked for the law firm involved um, representing um, Perpetual Trustees. <laughs> Um, to try and finalise this matter and evict Hogan out of the property. Now, what happened was that person in their statutory declaration used some hearsay. Now, the judge was not going to have hearsay in a statutory declaration in his or her court. So here's what happened. So effectively... Um, the affidavit was woefully, this is the magistrate's words, the affidavit was woefully inadequate. Uh, I infer that he has little or no legal training and possibly little experience in practice. My criticism is directed to the partner of the firm responsible. Now, this is where, how it goes. If you're a private investigator, corporate investigator or government investigator, the manager sits or falls or wins or falls on everything being right. He or she should not... Um, should know the correct way to prove matters of fact by a person with personal knowledge of the facts, not hearsay. Hearsay statements of facts based on sources of information that are identified and actually prove the facts, um, depose the facts that are clearly not correct, um, not treat such a paragraph as if it were meaningless nor allow it to be misleading, sworn or affirm statement of facts on which the solicitors asked the court to rely. That magistrate was scathing. This is one of the biggest law firms in Australia. Oh, boy, did they lose woefully here. Um, big time. And so it went on and the magistrate's final wording was all the more is the important in an ex parte application as this one is on such an application, a, sister, a solicitor has an even higher duty to ensure the court is informed correctly and by proper admissible evidence of facts relevant to the applicants. In this circumstance, I cannot get um, grant this application. It's dismissed. So a big loss for perpetual trustees through their law firm because the person making the affidavit in relation to this matter for the court relied on hearsay, didn't go out and check the facts. So what happens when you are an investigator and you come across hearsay? Do you go and get um, Google it and jump on Wikipedia or um, uh, the law websites to find out what a complex and complicated matter hearsay is? Well, you could do that and you could get lost in that um, for uh, three or four years. Um, lawyers go to law school to learn about hearsay, and I reckon it probably takes six months of their program. So let's make it relevant to you. If you're dealing with hearsay as an investigator, when you're taking a statement from someone and they say, well, Mary told Jane and Jane told me, 
You don't go, no, 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 that's hearsay. I can't, I can't, can't listen to that. You don't do that, right? You, you don't go, well, I can only put in here like a policeman that you told me something. I mean, basically, that's just, you know, like a stick up your backside. Stick up your backside sort of option, take a police option there. I'm going to be a policeman. You don't do that, right? Someone gives you some hearsay. You say to the person you're taking the statement from, okay, Mary told Jane, what's Jane's name, address and contact number? And you get that and then you can go and talk to Jane. And then she can tell you Mary's name, address and contact number and go from there. So what is hearsay? Let's have a look at it. Hearsay is something that the person you are taking a statement from who is telling you didn't see, didn't hear, didn't taste, didn't touch or didn't smell. So they didn't experience it with one of their five senses. So that's really, really easy and very uncomplicated, except touch can have things involved in it like pressure, heat, cold, an itch. And that's what you're clarifying when you're going to talk to that witness who mentioned the hearsay to the person you've just spoken to after you've got that other witnesses who gave the hearsay's name, address and contact details. So they will tell you then what Jane said and they'll give you Jane's contact details. You go and talk to her. So hearsay is very important. Now, it's used by police as well and it's very important in policing because when someone confesses to a crime, that's hearsay. The police officer was not there at the time. So therefore, they did not um, see it, touch it, taste it, smell it, or hear it with their own words, what happened at the incident. So this is a particularly gruesome one that happened in um, Queensland in the year 2000. This scumbag, um, Robert Long uh, killed 15 people in the Childers uh, Backpackers Hotel uh, by burning the hotel to the ground. There were 80 people there. He killed 15 of them. And several days later, they cornered him in a, a, a um, sugarcane field. And uh, he knifed a dog, um, police dog, and he slashed another police officer with a knife. So he ended up being shot by the police. Now, as he was lying there on the ground after being shot, the police officer that was there was a rather intelligent police officer and very experienced. And he said, mate, did you light the fire? And this guy goes, uh, yeah, 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 I did. So what he's doing is really making a dying declaration because they're in the middle of nowhere. He's bleeding. He's been shot in the arm. He could bleed out, right? It's pretty heavy wound. They're called in for help, but that's on the way. It's got to get there in this remote area. Now, the police officer realises that he's got a dying declaration, so he reaches into his pocket for his notebook and he hasn't brought it with him because he's been out on an armed search for an offender. He wasn't really going to be taking a lot of notes, but he just accidentally left that behind. So the police officer got out his pen and a $50 note out of his wallet and he said to the guy, what's your name, mate? And the bloke goes, uh, uh. Robert Long. So the police officer writes on the $50 note, I, Robert Long, lit the um, backpackers fire at the Childers Hotel and uh, subsequently killed 15 people. And he gave it to him to sign. And he signed it with his good arm that wasn't shot. And that was basically a dying declaration. It's hearsay. That's what it is. But by getting that dying declaration on the $50 note in a pen, that's going to be accepted by the court. That's more acceptable than one of the biggest law firms, statutory declarations in Queensland. So investigators, you really must realise you can be a woeful <laughs> law firm or you can be as good as that police officer who got that statutory declaration. Now, when they went to court on the matter, they only charged him with two of those deaths. They didn't for um, expediency, so he got life in jail for it. Um, he wasn't charged with the 13 others and he cannot be charged with that now. That That's his... Um, he, they can't do that. So they charged him with the two. And so he pleaded guilty and that note was never used. Had he pleaded not guilty, then that note may have been used in evidence 
Um, either way, they might have argued about it because it wasn't a dying declaration because he didn't die, but it could have been argued that it was some kind of admission or something like that. So people, hearsay is very important to be followed through. You don't go, oh, no, you can't tell me. I don't want to know. Um, that's uh, uh, yeah, I, can't, I can't accept that. You accept the hearsay, then you go to the source. And that's what the magistrate said in this matter, which is over someone's property where they live. So the application by one of the most expensive, largest and experienced law firms in Australia fell over because the principal of the law firm never checked the statutory declaration for the hearsay in it. So really big, that's significant and substantial news and a message sent out to the Australian civil investigation industry because that's a civil investigation matter. You do your investigations properly or they fall over. So perpetual trustees are going to be really um, pissed off <laughs> about that outcome. So, so if you're going to do investigations, people do them properly. <laughs> Don't do them ordinary. You know, what you read on Facebook about experts on surveillance and, and they have no idea and they crap on like they're the world. They sound even convincing. No, nah, no. Nah. No, they could probably get a job as a law clerk in that law firm. So, so that's the big news in Australian civil investigation. This went reinforcing by a magistrate in the civil investigation matter that it's got to be done properly. Down in Victoria, um, two people have got themselves into strife with WorkSafe um, for an accumulated $80,000 worth of benefits paid to them for workers' compensation when they went out and worked at the same time. So you can get on the WorkSafe website and read all about that. And WorkSafe, they just keep saying it time and time and time again, look, we're not here to supplement your income and pay you benefits. If you can't work, you can't work. We'll pay you 80% of your wage, uh, but you get back to work if you can work. So that's happened down in Victoria. You can see it on the WorkSafe web website for you surveillance investigators and WorkSafe uh, workers' compensation investigators. It's a must read because it's exactly what you do. So that, that's really important. Uh, what else? Oh, oh, yes, up in Queensland still. <laughs> no Tasmania this week much, except for uh, 15 jobs down there in government investigation at the airport in biosecurity. But in Queensland this week, a lady police officer, 25 years old, 38 offences, she's charged with including accessing police database. Now, we go on about this a lot. She's one, um, 38 uh, drugs, um, a whole lot of other things, all different offences, accessing a police database. And then this guy helped his mate, his old high school mate, find his um, estranged wife and children's address. So he's a police officer that's now lost his job and he's going to be charged. And um, I think uh, he's in lost his job. He's in serious trouble over letting his mate know where his ex-wife or estranged wife and children were. Um, in relation to accessing the police database. Private investigators do not like people who illegally access police databases. It gives them competitive advantage. That's the crook's competitive advantage over the honest private investigators. It makes the other private investigators who are honest stained with the same bad apple syndrome and the police hate people that do what this guy's done. So what he's done, he's gone and access, find out where she lives through the police database. So it might be through links to uh, power, gas, uh, firearms, whatever. That's how he's found them. And he's given that information in the divorce proceedings. Now, of course, the lady was in um, fear for her life after this. She couldn't trust anyone. And congratulations, Queensland Police. You followed through on it, done the right thing and eliminated this guy. What's the problem with this with government investigators when they do this? Police, um, uh, any form of government investigator that has access to this. So what they're doing is they're helping out a friend. They're helping out a friend or a mate, and it's called a loyalty card. The mate's gone, oh, I want to find my wife. I just want to serve documents. I don't want to go around there and kill her. Oh, of course you don't, mate, right? So they go, all right, I'll find that for you. They pick up that loyalty card and say, well, my loyalty to you as a friend since high school is worth more to me than my professional integrity which all of us as citizens who rely on the police force or government tax office or whatever it is to administer properly. And 
they have gone out and their professional integrity is in the toilet by doing that with their mates. So that's what's happened in these cases. And effectively, we as a community don't want that kind of corruption out there. So, so two cops in Queensland in serious trouble for doing that. And the um, CCC, Criminal Conduct Commission, have been involved in both those investigations as well as the police as well. Very serious stuff. Back to our job vacancies, people. Now, look, don't forget, you're looking for a job as a private, corporate or government investigator. Jump on this Facebook page, okay? There are three years of old jobs we leave up there, not to indicate they're still available, but where you can do your research from, tailor your applications to those jobs so you can get past the first um, artificial intelligence checking part, <laughs> usually the correct words in your application cover letter, and then go on through there and look at the um, jobs that are available this week. I only put up 30% of the jobs. Why do I do that? Because I only have um, time to do that many. There are literally thousands of jobs in regulatory compliance in Australia, in investigation in Australia. So you just jump on Seek or jump on their um web pages and you'll see those jobs. So MA investigations in New South Wales are looking for factual investigators in Queensland, ACT, WA and New South Wales. They want people to go out and interview people and take statements. Sure fact in New South Wales and Victoria are seeking factual investigators. So here's the two guys in charge of Sure Fact. Um, and if you get in touch with Mary Mansell, who you can see up here, uh, listed there. Her uh, contact details will be there. And Mary will organise your interview with one of these two guys. So you just say to these two guys, hi, I want a job as an factual investigator. I've been taught by Pat Flynn. And they will say, right, from the Australian Security Academy, come on in and let's have a chat. So sure fact, are looking for factual investigators in New South Wales and in Victoria. Quantum Corp seeking investigators um, they were looking for a general insurance investigator in Tasmania. I don't know if that's gone yet, but always worth a check with Quantum Corp on their website. Down at Insight Intelligence with Mario and the team. G'day, everyone at Insight Intelligence. Get on to Josh. He's got factual investigator position vacant down there. So he wants you to go out and take statements in workers' compensation matters because they have contracts with workers' compensation department to fulfil those contracts. So that's something that, uh, you know, you can get onto and do there. Gee, I'm glad no one's commenting because I just haven't got time to get to the comments. Whew. That's a relief. <laughs> Brookside are looking for investigators. So Brookside in um, New South Wales, they're looking for investigators. Get in touch with them there. Here's, here's their details. You get on their website. I'm sorry, that's Quantum Corp. They're looking for liability um, claims consultants in Sydney. Poor old Brookside, how did I go that far wrong? There must be another one here for Brookside. Yep, Darren Maynard's the person you want to contact at Brookside. Darren will look after you. You tell him Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy um, uh, taught you and show him your certificate from the Australian Security Academy. That'll get his attention and you can have a chat about potential work with Brookside. Um, down in Victoria, Vanguard are looking for private investigators down there. And so are Precise Investigations. You can um, get in touch with Precise Investigations on their website. And Kerrigan's are looking for factual investigators and surveillance operatives as well. So, and ProCare, <laughs> ProCare also are looking for investigators as well. So look, there are a lot of jobs for licensed private investigators conducting factual investigation out there um, in the workplace today. So certainly jump on this website, uh, sorry, this Facebook page, <laughs> and you'll see those positions vacant there. There's also some for loss adjusting. I haven't got an Australian Border Force Protection one up there. It was too big. Just Google Australian Border Force Protection. That's that's all you have to do just to see that. Um, very big appointment today on LinkedIn. I was really pleased to see Tara Donnelly. Um, she's been um, gained the new position as Operational Support Manager at Securitas Australia. Well done, Tara. Absolute wonderful person, really great, um, uh, enthusiastic and knowledgeable worker, highly qualified, and she's picked up that position off her own bat. 
Good on you, um, Tara. That's really good news in the industry this week. Um, around the traps um, in Queensland again, uh, Carpenter has been sent to jail for waging war against a building regulator. So um, the regulators enforced compliance in relation to the Carpenter's work and he stalked him and made threats against the regulator's wife as well. So um, the gentleman's gone to jail for a result of that. In Queensland, it's been reported by the Gold Coast Bulletin that apprentices have been exposed to ciliosis while studying in Victoria. Um, so they've issued in Queensland 99 warnings to employers um, in regard to 45 Gold Coast tradies this year in relation to ciliosis. It's an awful, awful to, um, thing to have and it is fatal and it's one of the dust diseases issues that you'll be working um, investigating as an investigator. Now, every now and again, um, I like to tell you what's happening in industry associations and stuff like that. I'll come back to industry associations in it. Start of my own because I couldn't get any sense out of um, a couple that I'm a member of in relation. I was just ignored over some issues I needed to raise. So apart from that, what people ask me about is what should I do if I want to do just a little bit of um, personal development or something like that, not a full um, nationally recognised qualification. Earlier on um, this year, I think I told you about one that had um, Ken Gamble and Mick Simmons in it, and it was a, a little three-day virtual conference. If you see those two names, you go to it and you watch it. But this one came up this week um, on LinkedIn, and it's Stephen Horn. And he is doing a presentation for the Institute of Internal Auditors of Australia. Now, if you see Ken Gamble, Mick Simmons or Stephen Horn, um, whether they're known to each other or not, <laughs> the first two are, the third probably doesn't know them, right? But um, it's an opportunity to really learn something. So here's uh, Stephen's program that he's doing. It's about auditing. And you might think, oh, that's just about numbers and accountants and it's boring and who cares and everybody hates accountants and you know, they're just really boring at dinner and all that sort of thing. Stephen Horne um, basically used to run the government department in New South Wales that investigated bent politicians. Really great investigator. If you want to spend 700 bucks or so on a uh, day's professional development, it's not nationally recognised, but very worthwhile. This is an event that I couldn't recommend more highly. So, you know, you see industry associations, oh, I've got another ex-cop talking about a um, mass murder or something. That's really irrelevant to you. This one, if you're a civil investigator, you don't have to be an accountant or an auditor, but what Stephen will be talking you through is some of the processes that they look at. So you will get very good value for the $700 it costs, money well spent. Um, so if you do get a chance to jump on LinkedIn, type in Stephen Horn and... He has the link there in his profile and you can go to that and see when it's on. So that's really important. Don't forget, while you're studying at the Australian Security Academy, people, you are now, due to our executive vice president, Renee, a student member of AIRLAP, the Academy of Investigation, Risk and Loss Adjusting Professionals. So certainly write to me or Casey and get your badge for that so it goes on networking. This week um, at Ella, our industry association, we've had our first three graduates who are honorary members of the association. It's our second highest level of um, membership. So they graduated with that this week and they were acknowledged by a professional industry association for their work. Plus, well, I think we had a further seven um, members who came in at associate level. Um, so that's the fourth highest level in our industry association. Each week we are meeting here at some stage at 2 o'clock to 2.30 each Friday so you can catch up with what's happening at our industry association. If you're a graduate student at the Australian Security Academy, please Google AirLap in um, LinkedIn and join. <laughs> that's what the picture looks like. Um, certainly go there and have a look at it. Uh, other news coming up... Um, Jason Fullerton and myself will be renewing um, our program for no risk. So for you security risk assessors out there, um, you'll be able to see that uh, coming up in the future. Keep an eye on all our social networking um, sites for when that's going to be coming back up. So uh, Jason and I will be uh, doing that again. We really had uh, great fun over our eight programs last year, and some of them are replaying on some of our um, channels. 
people been a really busy week my 31 minutes my 30 minutes has gone one minute over time i'm going to go out without usual way <laughs> That's it. My mission is complete for this week for Spy Curious, the weekly news for Australian corporate, government, private investigators, security risk assessors, loss adjusters, and workplace health and safety professionals. Uh, we'll be back next week with more news. Um, I'm probably going to retire the bow tie. I think it's a little bit old fashioned, a little bit silly, and I look like a dork. So next week I might come up with something completely new in relation to that. I look forward to seeing you here next week. I'm Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy. Have a great week, investigators. And if it's hearsay, follow through. See you next week. <laughs>